Well, hello, Grace Point family. What an honor to be back with you. I hope things are going well with you. We certainly pray to that end and, and look forward to the next chance we'll be, get together personally. But uh, between those times, I'm so thankful we have these opportunities to be together. I want to come and share a message today that I've entitled, Knock Down But Not Out. Have you ever had a bad day? I mean, honestly, have you ever had a bad day? How about a bad week? Some of us might say a bad year. I would say all of us would say 2020 has been kind of a bad year. Well, if you have had a bad day, maybe a bad month or a bad year, you're in pretty good company. I was looking through the scriptures. Here's a list of people just off the cuff that would agree with you on that. Moses certainly had bad days. David had bad days. How about Jonah? How about Job? How about Paul? Even Jesus himself would have to admit that some of his days on this earth were not the best days. And so if you've had a tough day, you're in pretty good company, right? We don't even know who wrote Psalm 42. We don't know exactly who the author is, but here's one thing I can tell you for sure. Based upon what he had to say in Psalm 42, he had a bad day. And so I want to share with you today, how, what do we do when we're having a bad day? How do we get through those tough days or maybe that tough month or even we could say a tough year? Well, this text has a lot to say about that. And to cut to the chase, let me just share a few things, a few ideas of how we deal with bad days and bad months and bad years. The first thing that this author did, obviously, was he remembered the past. In verse 6 of Psalm 42, we read these words. He said, Oh my God, my soul is in despair within me. Therefore, I remember you from the land of the Jordan, from the peaks of Hermon, from Mount Mizar. In other words, he's saying, I'm having a really tough day. I'm having a tough struggle. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remember the times in my past that you've been faithful. And I suspect if you've ha you're having a tough day or maybe a tough month or year, you can remember times in your life when God really was blessing in your life or maybe a time when he just gave favor to your life. You can remember the things he's brought you through in the past. This is not the first bad day you've ever had, certainly not the best, worst or the toughest month you probably ever had. I bet you've had them in your past. And it's interesting how we live our lives. The longer we live, the more we can look back and see how God has been consistently faithful in our lives. We've walked through a lot of stuff in life. And so this particular author, we don't know who it is, the first thing he did when he was out a tough go was he looked back to see in his life other times like that that God had seen him through. It's a pretty good piece of advice for all of us to do. The second thing we see is he recognized his present. It's important for you to understand that God has big shoulders, he understands, and it's okay to talk to him plainly about what you're going through. This author did. In verse 7, he describes how he was feeling. Listen to this. Deep calls to deep at the sound of your waterfalls. All your breakers and all your waves have rolled over me. He's describing here, he feels like he's suffocating or like he's drowning. Have you ever felt like that? Maybe you're having the toughest day, you just feel like you can't even breathe, it seems like because of maybe the onslaught of this world and what you're feeling. Here this author is very honest with God. He said, here's how I feel right now. Maybe it's not the way it is, but it's exactly the way I feel. I feel smothered right now. And maybe you're feeling that way right now. Maybe it's this COVID stuff, or maybe it's a financial issue. Maybe it's a relational issue, and you literally feel like you don't know how you're going to press on. And so he was honest with God about the way he felt. Again, he didn't just remember his past. He recognized his present and what he was going through. You know, God's Word has something to say about times like that. Listen to these words out of Isaiah 43 in verse 2. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, he says. And through the rivers, they will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be scorched, nor will the flame burn you. Well, God understood that. He understood exactly how that author was feeling. He understands how you feel when you feel smothered. He lets you know, I'm going to walk with you through the fire. I'll walk with you through the flood. I'll walk with you through the circumstance you find yourself in right now. And so he, he remembered his past. He recognized his present. He was honest about that. And the great news is he didn't stop there. The last thing he did was he received the promise. And I love these last words. In verse 8 he said this, The Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime, and his song will be with me in the night. A prayer to the God of my life. The first thing I noticed about him receiving this promise was number one, I noticed his confidence. He literally said this, the Lord will, not the Lord might, or I hope he will, or I'm praying that he might. He says, I know that the Lord will. Again, he says, the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. I love that. And I don't know what you're going through right now, what you're facing, but I promise you, you can have confidence that you're not alone and God will see you through. 
the Bible certainly makes that abundantly clear. The place I got my title comes from this passage in 2 Corinthians 4, verses 8 and 9. We read these words, We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not despairing, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. Well, I looked that up in, in another version of the Bible, the J.B. Phillips version. Listen to these words. This is so good. The Bible says, We are hard-pressed on all sides, but we're never frustrated. We are puzzled, but never in despair. We are perplexed and persecuted, but never deserted. We may be knocked down, but we will never be knocked out. I love that. And so notice his confidence, even in this circumstance. He's looked back, he's looking at his present circumstance, and now he looks forward to God's blessing. And the first thing he did was he maintained confidence. Number two, I see, again, this idea of his conversation. Sometimes we just talk to ourselves, don't we? Sometimes we preach the best sermons to ourselves. And notice what the author does here. He talks to himself. He says, he says, I will say to the God of my rock, why have you forsaken me? Why did I go mourning because of the oppression of my enemy? Verse 10 says this, as a shattering of my bones, my adversaries revile me when they say to me all day long, where is your God? In other words, they're making fun of me. They're making fun of my faith in God. Why am I having to walk through this? He's literally talking to himself. And so he had a conversation with himself. And it's okay to talk to yourself sometimes. In fact, I recommend it from time to time that you preach to yourself. In this case, the result of that was the last thing I'll share today, which is notice the conclusion of this. Again, the idea he had confidence, but he's questioning in his mind exactly what's going on. The last thing he did was he landed on the truth. He concluded that he would place his faith in God. And so you're having a tough day today? Let these words encourage you. He says, why are you in despair, O my soul? And why have you become disturbed within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance. And my God, he concluded with, I'm going through a tough time, but I know this, I'm not alone. God's with me. He's going to go through this with me all the way to the end. And so we may be knocked down, but we'll never be knocked out as long as he's King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I hope that encourages you today. Let's pray together, okay? Father, I'm so thankful that we can just be reminded today of your faithfulness. Nothing in this world, Father, is consistent but you. We love you and we thank you, God, for caring about us and demonstrating your love for us every single day of our lives. We pray for our nation, God. We pray for unity. We pray, Father, for healing. And we pray very soon, Lord, as a church, we can get back doing all the things you've called us to do and to be. Until then, watch over us and give us favor, we pray. In Christ's name, amen. God bless you. See you next time.